selling products that we've had done ever as an influencer. Um, we put up and we were, we were making our money, most of our money off of this one company. And all of a sudden it's gone mm -hmm. and I'm in a rotation. And now you, you notice, oh, I'm, I'm getting consistently this money coming in. Hey everyone, this is Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy here, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. Today, we're gonna to be discussing what brands need to know when it comes to Amazon influencers. We're also going to be discussing what should brands, what should a brand's goal be when working with influencers, what kind of videos you should be looking at, and how to work with the influencer directly. Okay, welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right, we're going to be discussing what brands need to know when working with an Amazon influencer. Our guest is former TV news reporter, anchor, who works full-time from home doing product reviews on Amazon and part of their influencer program. And I was just mentioning to the guests, there's going to be times where I am going to be coughing and I almost, I caught myself and I was able to control it, but I can't say what I'm going to do for the rest of the podcast. She also works as a brand with businesses and brands as an online uh, talent and creates UGC, the user generated content reels, scripted content, and is a live shopping host. Welcome. This is our first time uh, guest, Deanne Gustafson. So uh, Kelsey, can you hit a sponsor? Facing cash flow challenges with your e-commerce business? Discover Viably, your ultimate financial ally. From real-time sales data integrations to immediate funding access, Viably is here to support you. Plan your growth with their free tool for online sellers and engage with specialists whenever you need. Extend your cash flow with Viably. Welcome, Deanne. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can talk. I don't have a cough, so I'm good. Hey. You want to become a cigar influencer? <laughs> I'd probably be like the last person. <laughs> <laughs> You never That's know until you try. Story. That's a really <laughs> cool story. And so was it a cigar conference? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is put on by the cigar aficionado once a year and it's called the big smoke. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's in Vegas and there's probably over the period of the two days, probably two or 3000 cigar smokers. The Oh, by the way, the guy I was sitting beside that we are just talking about. Yeah. I said, well, how many cigars do you normally smoke in a day? And he goes about four or five. And I thought, wow, you know, that's, that's a good amount. He says, this is my 17th cigar today. Uh, and he went on to smoke another one. He had 18 cigars that day. Wow. Well, at least he owns the, the company. So <laughs> I don't know how you can do that. 18 cigars. I can't see how you do five a day, man. But um, anyway, you, you just never know. And you never know. And maybe I should. There's probably demand for girls in that space. <laughs> Cigar Vixen. Okay. So th all there are about 10 cigar smoke or cigar influencers that have 750 to 2.5 million uh, followers. It's just, it's again, it's that that's another big area for cigar accessories, um, the types of cigars. It's, it's a huge um, area and you, you just wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't. But, That's and so cool. women in cigars, by the way, it's a growing trend. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, very cool. I love it. Yeah. So we had a blast. But now on to you. Okay. <laughs> so talking about influencers, why don't we talk about, uh, let's talk about just general influencers. So why should brands be even looking for an Amazon influencer? Yeah. So if you're selling on Amazon, then I do think that's where the match would be a great match. And the reason would be videos are really powerful. And if it's mm -hmm. done well, it converts to sales. So if it's done poorly, you know what? You wasted your money, I think. Or you could do it yourself. It might not convert to sales the same way. But if you can work with an influencer who really knows the formula of what works and they're authentic and real and that's where you're going to find a little bit of a gold mine. So that's why I recommend that. 
Now, should you work with, we were just talking about cigars, but well, what happens if you are into, I don't know, coffee, should you work with an influencer that is uh, specific to the niche or that they could be general? Um, I think both is, is fine. If you want more of like that social media video, then working within a niche is probably smart. If you're going to pay them to push it out on their own social media, then that could make sense. But as far as Amazon goes, you don't, I don't personally think you need a niche as long as you can be passionate about the product. So for me, I will do everything and anything almost of a video, except like I do kind of know like tech's not always my thing. So I might not focus on tech, but I'm really good at doing the fashion, the beauty, the lifestyle stuff. So I take more of those products on. That said, I've probably reviewed 10 humidifiers. Am I a humidifier expert? No, <laughs> now I am maybe, but no, I'm just a mom who has kids and I can show how a humidifier works. So I don't think you have to find that niche. I just think it's good. It can be good though. If you wanted someone to put it out to their social media, then yes. I, I had to become a toe fungus expert. <laughs> Not funny. I, I, I've written more press releases on toe fungus. Wait, than why? Did you have? Were you I had a client it? that had uh, a very popular toe fungus treatment. And I had to throw myself into it and understand, you know, what it is, uh, all the benefits, well, not benefits for toe fungus, but all the benefits of his product. Um, yep. every, just had to jump right in. I've written literally over 100 press releases on toe fungus. Isn't that funny? And yep. it's like, would you say that, yeah, you're not a medical doctor. You're not. But you, what you've done is really helped the reach for your friend's product. Right. So yeah, I don't think you have to find just like that one person who's, you know, the toe fungus expert. You can find other people. Yeah. You, and you know what's funny? You just said that, you know, I'm not an like an expert in that. I'm not a doctor, but that reminds me of something. And I'm not mentioning any names, but we do have a client um, who is a uh, fairly well-known doctor. And we write a lot of the, the uh, articles that go out for him. So we'll write it well-researched and he'll proof it and he'll make any changes. But even in something like that content, if you find somebody that's really great with specific types of research or content, mm -hmm. you don't have to be that expert. And we're, we're publishing this in magazines uh, for this doctor, but again, he gets last say, so yeah. it is reviewed by him. But yeah, totally. Yeah. It, it's funny because I'll get texts sometimes from friends so I have two little girls who are six and four, but I've done like Amazon, you can review anything. So when I buy them their little girl underwear, I've reviewed it because I'm like, I'm going to review it. You know, I'm going to give my opinion on this stuff. Now, they're not in the video. Trust me, they're not. Yeah. Too many creeps out there in this world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I'm holding it up and talking about it. And I've had so many friends because, you know, we're on this, have our kids be like, I just saw your review on in the girl's underwear. And I'm like, well, that's funny. So in my head, I'm like, I'm the girl's underwear expert. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now that leads to a good question because I've had asked people, people ask me about uh, kids in videos mm -hmm. and I'm the same way. I, I have big red flag creep alert. Um, I don't, re I wouldn't recommend it, but in general, what would you say? So I do have my kids in a lot of videos, but here's my advice on it. Okay, so one, Amazon is pretty strict about some rules. You have to appear in the video as well, like even like your hand, like sometimes I'll be like handing them the toy or something like that. Um, they do need you to be in it. And then swimwear, I try to make sure my kids wear like the long sleeve and then like the shorts or a skirt swimsuit. Um, Amazon used to be really strict at that, but then I don't know. I feel like they've kind of become less strict, but protect your kids. That's just what I would say. But as far mm. as like them, mine, I just try to keep it really natural. They're young enough where they're excited to get the toy and I let them play with it or whatever the item is clothing they're in it. And then I go back later and story it. So I will voice it over. I'm never trying to make them act or be anything. Cause I just, I don't want them to feel like it's a forced thing. Yeah. And when they get to the age where they're like, I'm not into this, then they're done. You know, like that's totally fine. I don't want to ever put that like pressure on them. Like, no, you will be a kid influencer. Like, no, <laughs> that is not, not going to happen. Um, so yeah, but I will say I have a YouTube channel as well that I've been growing and I put a lot of my reviews over there. 
And I had one where my kids were just in leotards and it had a lot of views. And I was like, and I got the, the um, TubeBuddy software. So now I can see like what people are searching. And unfortunately, I looked at and saw oh. the reason that's popular is because it's little girls stretching. And I'm like, oh, oh gross. Oh. So that it's like, you know, you think like, oh, yeah, there's just creepy. No, there's like really creepy people out there. Like they're literally searching for this. Yeah. yeah after you see that on TubeBuddy, <laughs> right? Just in gym in leotards, like they're yeah. not doing anything. Yeah, but uh, too bad you couldn't get their IPs. <laughs> I know, right? Ugh. No, but then you just kind of have to make that decision. You're like, hey, the views and the potential sale, or just take it off, delete it. Like it's not worth it. Yeah, so. I I'm I go to the other side because I just uh, like you. There's just too many creeps. There's but so at creeps. at the on the other side of it. Um, there's so many different niches and so many different ways that you can repurpose it. You you were just talking about it. So let's talk about that. So somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I, I I've got this coffee mug mm -hmm. um, and it's a great coffee mug. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an innovative coffee mug. What should I do with it? What type of videos should I create? What would you, and I know, okay, so how long is a piece of string? I already know that part, but the, uh, for an average uh, uh, product, what would you say yeah. the typical videos would be? So I would say, especially if you're coming at this as a seller and maybe you don't have the budget to hire someone or you want to do the video yourself or you want to guide the influencer of how to do the video, I think what works best is an actual demo. So if you have a coffee mm. mug that's innovative, I want to see what does it do? And don't just be like, I poured coffee and this is a great mug. Like, show me why this mug is better than other mugs. And if that means like two mugs side by side, or you're just really going into some detail of like how awesome this mug is, that's what's going to be, I think that's what makes for a better video. So really showing that demo, showing it in action if possible. And some things it's really hard to show in action. It's like, they just don't lend to very much action, but what can you show? What detail can you show? that makes sense for the viewer where they're like, oh, I needed to see that so that now I'm going to click add to cart and buy. And then the other tip I will give everyone is at the end of all my videos, I smile. So there's such a difference between being like, this is a great hair clip. I think you're going to like it. And this is a great hair clip. I think you're going to love it. Like that little smile makes such a difference, I think, mm. in sales. So that's just another tip of like ending in a really positive note and just you might feel cheesy, but throw that smile on there. I swear it works. I haven't heard that word since I was listening to a little Frank Zappa. Uh, cheesy. Cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you. I mean, I feel cheesy. Like I'll be like, "This is a great, you know, coffee." Yeah. You know. Ding. <laughs> so, where do you publish them now? Are, are there certain uh, you or YouTube? That's, I usually publish to YouTube, but yeah. uh, are there certain social media platforms? that work or is it does it depend on that niche i think it depends on the niche the person i mean there's so much social social media right like mm -hmm. there's a bazillion things like i'm not even in some of them i'm like oh there's the snap partner program i haven't even looked at that um there's there's so many but i'll post to it kind of depends on like my i try to not think about what my audience would be interested in versus just giving them everything and anything like i don't need to put a humidifier video on my instagram probably but People on Instagram might want to see some beauty products, some lifestyle products. And then I do put everything on YouTube to copyright it. That's like kind of the first and foremost. It's yep. just a lot of theft, unfortunately, of influencer videos. And then I have two channels now. One that's like all just reviews. And then one I'm trying to be a little more lifestyle specific. And then TikTok, I started doing live over there. And there's a whole other like world of products that you can do videos on. So yeah, there's lots of opportunity. What's your favorite? Right now, YouTube is my focus. Yeah. And I'm enjoying and, and you can make money off of YouTube. I'm talking yeah, about the average I'm making person. money off of that just with affiliate links from Amazon. So oh, nice. I actually don't even have my channel monetized yet. And that's something to know. I'll, I'll be like so totally transparent. I'm not like a super duper crazy big influencer. I'm more of like a micro influencer. But what I'm good at are product review videos. So that's kind of where I, I'm still learning too a lot of things about social media. So yeah, it's really interesting. I don't know. Uh, I I came out a bit later today, but uh, did you 
do you have any of your videos lined up that we could watch one of them? Oh, I don't have one lined up, but I mean, I could get you one. <laughs> well, maybe at the break, we could line yeah. something up. I'd line really like up. to see that. Let me know what kind of, I mean, usually mine, I do under a minute. So I, they yep. won't be like, you know, you're not gonna be sitting for a documentary and, <laughs> um, I can, yeah, I'll look into what maybe just a recent, Let's do it. something fun. Yeah. I, this is, I'm just curious about this one. This was a, I had a group of, of questions I thought I'd be asking today, but this one, uh, this comes back to the product, uh, the, the, the seller. Okay. What do you think about sellers or how do you treat sellers that send you this bottle of Coke and you send them back the video and they're looking at it? What do you say when they come back and say, oh, you know what? I didn't like the 34th to the 37th second. Can you revise it? Well, I think it all depends on what you agreed ahead of time. Right. And for the most part, the sellers that I'm working with are not paying me enough for any revisions and I get my money up front. So I would say, peace out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I thought you'd say. But if it's something where I've, you know, I've, I'm working with them and I understand why they said that, like maybe they're right, like that's mm -hmm. 35 second mark, it could be better. Then You're not smiling. I will have a little compassion and just, and change it. And sure. but the hardest thing is I'm very truthful in my reviews. So I, and I usually do this, the cookie method. So it's like good needs improvement. Good. But if something needs improvement, I'm going to mention it. And if they want that taken out, it's not happening because then like, I'm not being truthful in my reviews. Do you tell them that up front? No, I usually, my, I mean, I think they've seen enough of my videos, hopefully that they just know what they're going to get. But what I will do, and this is, I've had this happen where the product sent to me is a dud. Like it's either it, it's broken or it's just a piece of junk. Right. And I will tell them, I'm going to be honest in my review and say, this doesn't work. What do you want? You know, what would you like to do with that? And usually what they do is they say, I'm going to send you another one. Okay, nine out of 10 times, the next one they send me, same problem. It's the same yeah. thing. It's like, it's still broken. Like, I don't know why you thought that. <laughs> but so then I will tell them, and and I don't know, hopefully this is allowed in the Amazon program, but I will just give them a kill fee. I'll say, look, I will, if you just pay me X amount of money, I won't do the video at all. And yeah. then usually they just pay me the kill fee because at that point I've already spent time like unboxing it, looking at it, realizing it's broken. Um, so they're just kind of paying me for my time. And I'd rather not bash a company. Like my goal is not to talk about how bad a product is. I'd rather be silent than like talk about how bad something is. And plus we only get paid in, um, on Amazon. You know, we'll get paid from the seller, but paid on Amazon and commission. So if I'm selling something that's going to get returned, that gives me no benefit. Right. So there's no actual benefit for me to to promote a product that's not great. That could so, actually hurt because you, you're also judged by your conversion rate. Yeah, exactly. And there's, there's better things out there. So I always think it's a good lesson for the seller too. like, Hey, your stuff is not working. Like you're going to get a bunch of returns. They don't want that either. Right. So, so I, I don't want, I hope the person's not listening. I'm not going to mention the brand. So I, I received um, a pressure mat. Okay. okay. But I don't think they checked it from the manufacturer. So usually there's pressure points that come in, right? Mm -hmm. So I put my hand on it. I thought, this is too sharp. I pressed on it just with my hand because I, I didn't feel that my weight. I, I thought, this is going to puncture me all over my body. And I put my hand down and I instantly got about 100 cuts wow. all over my hand. And then when I went to pick it up, I actually slipped my wrist. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I number one always check your product from the manufacturer so i can just imagine what was happening my then my wife tried the pillow and it was the same sort of thing it, it was just completely uncomfortable all the pressure points were needle sharp so yeah. you couldn't do it you just couldn't you couldn't do it and you probably saved them thousands of dollars oh, oh yeah what they would have paid, you know, hopefully it's at that point where you're actually doing them a service by saying, this is dangerous. Like, this is awful. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, so that's, that's one of the things that by going out to, to, uh, an influencer, I, and see, I, I was always at that. I didn't know because I'm not that experienced at it, but 
do you do you mention the bad things and you just cleared it up you I can do. say you know just give an honest review give an honest review i yeah. think that's what people want and then their expectations are met as well because if you just talked about like I have a hair on my desk. I always have like a bazillion things on my desk. But like, if you talk about how amazing these hair tools are, they're the best thing. And then the person gets it and they're like, yeah, but she didn't even mention how like that button turns off all the time. But if I had just said like, this thing's amazing, but just so you know, like be really careful, that button will turn off. That little piece of information is the difference between somebody going to return it because they don't understand like that might just happen versus keeping it. Right. So for, for yourself, what type of videos do you produce? So I do all kinds. I mean, I really do. Like, that's kind of the funny part about my storefront. And my husband will do videos too. So I, there'll be BB guns and then there'll be makeup. Like, it's like everything and anything under the sun. Um, but I do, I say no to a lot of things just based on time. Because I don't have the time in the day to do every single video. But for the most part, um, I would say lifestyle is definitely a focus and then things that are, are mom related. And a lot of times I'm thinking also, um, what can I resell? What, what do I want to do? You know, maybe I want to have a thing to donate for Christmas time. So then I'm, I'll take on products that way too. So it's, and what are also, of course, what do I need? What do I want? Like, but at, what happens, this is really fascinating is like for year for about a year i wanted an air fryer and i would reach out to the the brokers in china that i was working with at the time and none of them had air fryers well finally someone sent me an air fryer so i did the video and then after that i've been sent probably five or six air fryers so what happens is when you do one then the competitors see it and then they'll reach out to give you right. the product and then it's like well i don't really need another air fryer <laughs> so but my family has all been blessed with air fryers. There, you, there you go. <laughs> hey, there was there was very similar. My my wallet uh, disintegrated in Mexico, so the kids got me a new wallet. And then after that, I did one video for a company about a wallet. And now, literally, I have fifteen new wallets yep. on the ground <laughs> over here from other companies. It's just yeah, I know what you're saying. And you become the wallet <laughs> expert. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could do that with gold watches. Right. Hint, wow. hint. <laughs> it's coming up. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's the bottom of the hour. Uh, Kelsey, why don't we um, try to share a video uh, when we come back? Okay. Uh, and let me see. It's bottom of the hour. So at the top of the hour, we always give away a prize. It's called the Wheel of Kelsey. So if you're a first time listener, hashtag Wheel of Kelsey. If you tag two people, you will get a second entry. What are we looking at today? I know it's an awesome prize, but what are you giving away? Okay. Well, since we're talking about being sent a lot of stuff, um, this was a recent thing that was sent to me. It's his and her gold watches. Ooh. Ooh. They're very nice. Um, they are adjustable and I do have the extra if you have a bigger wrist. So you can you can adjust if you need to. Um, they retail for about, I think about 150 each. So they're legit. Like they're nice. Nice. Gold watches. So you can choose that or, or. If you're like, I don't really want that. That's not my style. I'm happy to do a coaching session as well. So I would do a 30 minute coaching session with you. And that's retailed about a hundred dollars. Fantastic. So hashtag wheel of Kelsey tag two people. You could either get the gold watches or the coaching session. Okay, Kels, let's go to a sponsor and we'll be right back. This episode of Lunch with Norm is sponsored by VAA Philippines. Looking for a high quality virtual assistant for your business? With the rigorous screening, intensive Amazon and Walmart training, and ongoing professional development, get the peace of mind with skill and motivated virtual assistants for a long-term working relationship. Hire through VAA today, and now let's get back to the show. All right, we are back. Oh, uh, Deanne, <clears throat> excuse me, here we go. No worries. Now we're back. All right. Um, did you have time to get a video 
I was just pulling one right now. So give me one second and let me just grab something fun here. Oh, you just got a new subscriber. Woohoo. Okay. There you go. Grab this video. Share. Copy. This one I'm just grabbing because it's about a minute. So that way. This bearded mimic. All right. You've you've, got a minute. (laughs) You've got my attention, bearded mimic. All right, so we are about ready. All right, I put one in there. Okay, right, I'm just uh, pulling it up now, so just give me one second. And I'm sure. not saying this is like the best work of my life or anything like that. This is just just a, an example. An example of a demo. All right, just a second. I'm just waiting for those YouTube ads, making sure everything's good. I'm sure I have better videos, so don't judge <laughs> too harshly. <laughs> okay, I hope the uh, volume works too. Okay. See the quality of the producer I have. <laughs> okay, while we're waiting for... Oh, here we go. That's a good shot. Okay. There we go. And smiling. Free stream. <laughs> Uh, sorry, this is my computer is slowing down right now. Um, okay. Well, if it's not going to work, then Kels, can you just put in the comments where people can go and see some of the ends? Uh, well, you know we should probably just throw my storefront in there. You can see all yeah. my videos on my storefront. Ah, there we go. I gave it YouTube, but I should have just thrown you a. Um, one of my main ones, all my storefront. Let's see. All right. Here you go. I'll give you that. Perfect. You'll see a ton of videos. I mean, I think I have over 2,500 videos or something like that. Like it's insane. So this leads to another question about expectations for uh, influencers. So those people trying to go and do this as a side hustle, not full time, but a side hustle. Can you make money? Uh, what kind of expectations are there for people going out there and trying to become an Amazon influencer? That's a great question. So, yes, there's opportunity. Absolutely. But as a side hustle, I would say your income is going to be a lot less as a side hustle. So I work this full time. I mean, I'm doing my videos 40 to 60 hours a week. Oh my God. That is also with my kids in preschool and kindergarten full days, like 8.30 to 5.30. So, um, but for me, it's like, I love what I do. And it it goes back to my news reporting. I used to be, um, I left TV news because it's way too negative. And when I was freelancing, I used to email consumer reports all the time. And I would say, Hey, would you ever be interested in hiring a freelance reporter? I would love to do videos. And they emailed me back zero times. They didn't even like give me a courtesy, like, no, we're not hiring. They just didn't have the, they couldn't be bothered. (laughs) But now I'm literally doing like, I feel like I kind of manifested what I've always wanted to do, which is video product reviews. So for me, it like lights me up. If you're looking just to make a quick buck, like this might not light you up. It might be more work than the payout at this point. Now, last year, Amazon, I would have maybe said something different. Yep. Um, I felt like it was great. Like you could just get right in and ramp right up. And now I think um, it's a lot more work. Um, there's definitely still a lot of opportunity. So don't get me wrong. And I love the program. I recommend it to everyone. But I really think you need to be passionate before you just jump in. It's not like a fast grab, make your money fast, get rich quick. Um, but I, I've seen, I don't, I don't think that's good. I, I like, I re, I looked last, oh, I was probably about two months ago and related videos had disappeared off a lot of Amazon uh, listings. I couldn't find them. I see them back now, but not a hundred percent. And I heard that uh, shoppable videos were starting not to appear on listings. So if that's where you're making your money, that's a problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you have to really come at the program with different ways. So you need to do your affiliate links and be bringing traffic in. Amazon kind of rewards you for that, I believe. And then the videos that are the shoppable videos, 
because I have so many and I'm constantly creating new ones, I'm doing okay. I have seen a dip, but I'm not like, you know, do, I, I'm still doing okay. But I can't, it's not money where I like, oh, I did that video a year ago and now I don't have to do anything. It's mm -hmm. not like that. Like I'm still working pretty hard at it. And um, yeah, I mean, I love it, but I do, the thing about Amazon and I'm sure every seller watching understands is they change things all the time without warning. And then they change it back. They change something else. It's constant. And so you're always on a roller coaster and you don't really know, like, am I going to be on the high today or the low today? Am I upside down? You just have to be ready to be part of the ride. And so I'm really adaptable. So for me, that's fine. Like, cool. I'm on the roller coaster. Let's go. And I also come at this with a, a lot of gratitude to Amazon. So I know I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and people are always mad. Oh, they took away the videos and da 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 da. da. And I'm like, Amazon doesn't owe us anything. Like we're lucky to be part of this. Mm. So I really look at it as like in my gratitude list, you know, I'm grateful for my family, da, 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 da. and then I always say I'm grateful for Amazon because <laughs> I am, I'm just, I'm really grateful for it. So. So because of that inconsistency right now, are you driving a lot of external traffic from social media? I'm trying. So I've yeah. been focusing a lot on growing that and I don't have a huge following. So that's been a big chunk of my time now is to, to grow that. And I think that's actually kind of a blessing as well. Like I wasn't really focused on it. And I think Amazon kind of forced me to be more focused on it, but I think it's a good thing. Like everyone knows in business, you got to diversify. If you put all your eggs in one basket, that's a horrible idea. So to be able to have different audiences, different places is really smart. So yeah, I'm working on my offsite traffic. I have my onsite shoppable videos. I also freelance still. So I have multiple, multiple things that I do. How, how big is your audience or how big is your, uh, are your follow, follower? Oh gosh, base? like baby, like <laughs> I have, um, okay. So like on my, you'll see my socials on my mm -hmm. storefront. I think I have at least two up there. So my, my Instagram, I'm talking like 1800, like it's not a huge amount there. We also have a business um, called Kombucha on tap. So I do have a, a larger following on our business page. And then, um, my YouTube is now, I think it's like 1.5 thousand followers. So it's still like just growing TikTok I avoided forever because of security reasons. And now I, I just recently was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I signed up for um, to do live on TikTok. And I literally gave TikTok like every piece of information about me, except for like the code to my front door, which I'm sure they could find what, out. What, what is that code? <laughs> yeah, let's go. And you guys want my pin too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gave everything. To I, I literally was like, I went from like, no TikTok security to like here have every here's my social security here's my driver's license I'm like ah. so um I'm growing that now and I think on TikTok it's like nothing it's like 145 that said though I've made money on live so sometimes another thing to think about is you can make money without the huge audience so if I can be like an inspiration to anyone on that like I've made money without having a huge following. It is possible to be earning income as you're growing it. So, but people love that though. So nano and micro influencers yeah. are the sweet spot for, for Amazon brands. They, they want to have 10 nano or 20 nano influences because people trust yeah, the I micro and nano factor. I think it is a trust factor, which is really great. And there's nothing wrong. So there's not, yeah, I will give, I'll vouch. Like there's nothing wrong with nano and micro influencers. Um, a lot of times I do get frustrated because there's brands where I sell thousands of dollars worth of their products on Amazon because it's just stuff I use and I love. And then I reach out to them to say, Hey, can I be an affiliate for you guys? Like, can we collab? And they'll be like, yeah, your socials aren't enough. And I'm like, yeah, but I sell thousands of dollars of your products. Like, yeah, and what I'm harm would that be? 10,000 followers. But, you know, <laughs> it's like, whatever. It is what it is. Now, going into your contracts, uh, I, I'm just interested to see what are you laying out for people or what do you want to uh, talk to people about uh, when they're, you You know I'm Canadian now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what do you want to see in these agreements when you uh, work, yeah. with a, uh, work with an influencer so, or uh, work with a seller? 
Yeah, absolutely. So when I work with sellers, I lay out a few things. Um, the first one is if I've never worked with you before, I do request my payment up front. If you are a very established company, I will make a, a like an okay, like you can pay me after. But otherwise, I always want it up front. The last thing I want to do is like chase invoices. That's like the biggest headache for anyone. Um, I also say that I own the content. So you can't just go and upload it as your own. And that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So I always make that crystal clear. Like I own What happens it. when that happens? Uh, copyright strike. That's like, I just do it. I file it on Amazon. Um, if I, if I catch it, but I mean, I have thousands of videos, so it takes sometimes days to pour through and find these things. Um, and also, and I'll tell them if you want to buy the rights to this video, I'm happy to sell it to you. So that's always an option too. And then what else? I give them a timeline of how long it's going to take as well. So that those expectations are set and, and they have to ship it to me. So as an Amazon influencer, we cannot buy the product you have to send it to us. So that's really important to know. So just know you're going to ship it to them. Um, they're going to get it. You need to have a clear expectation of the delivery of the time. Um, because some of us get, we're getting tons of products. So if you think you're just going to get your product shipped and the next day the video is going to pop up, like you got to discuss that ahead of time. So I give like multiple weeks of how long yeah. it's going to take. Um, what else? I think those are the main ones. Yeah. What about, uh, you, you talked about if somebody wants the, the, the video for themselves, mm -hmm. do you double the price, triple the price? Yeah, I think it's case by case uh -huh. of, of what, what went into the video, but it is more money. Yeah. Because once they have it, then you're giving them a marketing video, which if you were to pay someone, you know, a production studio, all the things they'd be spending thousands of dollars. On right. That. And so I do, I do charge a a much higher fee for that. And I understand that a lot of people don't have that in their budgets. And then I'm like, great, share my stuff. Like, don't, you know, don't steal it, please. Yeah. And it's important if you're just listening and you're even thinking about doing that, it's so important that this is work that this is a person's livelihood. This is what they do for a living. And if you try to skirt it, first of all, um, it's, it's, not very ethical. Second of all, uh, your product, your video would just be uh, taken down. And third, you could be sued. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, so just think about it before. And sometimes it's very innocent. People don't realize it. Uh, and people just think that, oh, they made the video. What harm is it? If I can just, you know, put it on my YouTube channel, yeah. but that's just stealing somebody else's work. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about tips. So tips for doing videos that convert. Yeah, I gave a few earlier, but some of the, I think for the main tips, the main takeaways, if I want you to get anything that has worked for me is showing it in action. Mm -hmm. So an actual demo, a before and after do pretty well. Like if it's something that you can show. Now, if it's something where like, it's hard to show, then you be creative, right? Like try to do something with it. That's creative. Um, also, if it's something that requires installation, show the installation process, even if that means you speed it up. So a lot of times, um, like I had mentioned earlier, my husband's in a lot of videos with me. So if there's like a ceiling fan, if I try to install that, it's going to take me like a month because I just don't have that engineering brain, but he can do it in a couple hours. So what I'll do is maybe the intro of the video, and then I'll kind of toss it to him like, okay, now he's going to take it away with how to set this up. And he'll go piece by piece by piece of his steps. So I think what you want to do is just think of the person that is shopping and what information do they need before they make that purchase. And so, and you can do multiple videos. You could do one just on the installation. You could do another on, you know, the benefits of it. So there's different ways you can break out your video. That's uh, interesting because sometimes uh, I, I've told people to, when you're working with an influencer uh, or a video production company, to try to break the script into uh, a longer uh, a longer video production, maybe two or three minutes, but 30 minute segments where you're talking about different benefits, different features, uh, and then you can take each one of those and use them as a, a video. 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea, especially if you have a product that's that's very detailed. Like if you cram all that information into one, it, it can get lost, but you can absolutely break it out and do multiple videos. And there's, I think that's a great idea. If I had a product I was selling, I would make sure I had a lot of searchable videos. So let's talk about your YouTube channel. Uh, I'm, I have a YouTube channel, but as for an influencer, I think it's a bit different. Can you tell us uh, more about the process and, and how you set that up and how it works? Sure. So I have learned a ton. I was telling Kelsey of this. I originally, okay, well, actually my YouTube channel is kind of old. I think it's, um, I want to say I started in like 2010 or something like that. Like, so it's like 13 years old, maybe even older than that. There may be 2008 stuff in there. So it used to be my channel was just my portfolio for being a news broadcaster. And so it was, you know, clips and things like that. So I never really used it. And then with the Amazon influencer program, I had been given a tip to copyright all your videos by putting them on YouTube first so that if somebody else steals it, you get the mm. alert. So I just was putting up videos like I would be like, great Tumblr. That was it. Like I did not do searchable keywords. Like, oh, I like messed everything up. I also hate negativity. So I disabled comments because I was like, I don't want to hear from annoying people. <laughs> I did, I did, yeah, I did like everything wrong. Uh -huh. And then I had comments on for like a minute and I did like this pizza wheel, you know, those cutters. Yep. And somebody literally commented that I don't know how to cut pizza correctly. And I was like, <laughs> come on, people. Like, I'm literally holding a phone with one hand and cutting a pizza with another. Like, I'm sorry I didn't go to school for this. <laughs> but I just was so annoyed. So then I disabled comments again. I was like, I don't have time for these dumb people in my world. Um, and so my YouTube channel was doing okay, but, and granted, because I've done thousands of product review videos, there was a ton of videos. And then I started seeing some of my offsite commissions coming from YouTube. And I was like, oh, so I need to pay a little more attention. And now every night till like midnight, I stay up and I'm going through every single video and I'm retitling it. So that it says Stanley 40 ounce amazing tumblr you need this or whatever so that it's actually searchable so that's a tip make your title searchable and then i put my comments back on and i actually respond to everyone if it's um if it's like super off then they're just deleted i don't you know i don't have time for that but even if it's like kind of like a weird comment i might respond and be like oh tell me more or something like that to get them to come back to my video because I'm trying to get my watch hours to go up. So I'm like doing all the, the tricks and, um, and I, and I, my comments are back on. So now I'm going through and I'm putting my affiliate link in the first comment on every video I'm pinning it. So that on, on, on every video, the first the, comment, the first comment, I'm pinning my affiliate link and saying affiliate link. So make sure yep. you always disclose it's an affiliate link. That's a huge deal. Um, but I'm pinning it so that they don't have to like do work. Like, yes, it still pops up four seconds into the video and yes, it's in the description, but it's also right there in the comment. So I just realized people, if they're going to like click something, it needs to be so simple and easy, like in their face. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And it seems to be really, really working. I mean, I just started like this process two weeks ago and mm -hmm. I'm, I have like 700 more videos to go, but, um, but it's also good because it's giving me inventory on the videos I've done. And I'm like, wow, like I could repurpose this content so many different ways. Yeah. That's another thing. Like once you put your content on YouTube, you have that opportunity to then go back and like reuse those videos. Now, what about uh, the actual link when you go, a few seconds in, are you seeing the raw link or are you doing a short link? Um, I'm just right now taking it straight up from site stripe. I do have genius links, but I'm not using that on my YouTube right now. Okay. Yeah. Is that against policy? If I don't do know. It's such a gray area and I've yeah. asked Amazon before and they kind of gave me like a, we can either confirm or deny it. Like it was like, what, what's the answer? Like, can you tell me yes or no? So I think for some people it's allowed for others. It's not for some, it's gray area. Um, I was not told no, but I also wasn't told like, yeah, you know, so, um, and if you stop using them, you have to go and redo all of yours. So that's another reason I don't do it. Because if I were to change one to another, I don't want to have to like go back and do this process again. Uh, and I just noticed Ben Gross there. Uh, all I have to say is, hey, Ben, 
Next time, we're going to kidnap you and bring you to the cigar show. It was awesome, and we missed you. <laughs> Ben's another great cigar smoker. Oh, nice. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I just now see the comments. Sorry, guys. I've, like, completely ignored all these comments. That oh, I'm don't worry. We're going to go through them in a okay, second with all, the, uh, with all the questions. I'd like to know your day in the life. Okay. What does that look like? Day in the life. Okay. Well, I feel like working from home is the best thing ever. So I'm a huge proponent of that. Um, most of my days, I like get my kids off to school and then I'll make like an espresso and I have a sauna here. So I like sit in the infrared sauna and like look at my numbers. I always go through my data every single day. I jump on my computer and see like what sold and how I did financially. And then it's usually making a list of like, what do I need to film today, edit today? And I batch. So some days I'm just filming, like I'm cranking out 10 videos. And some days I'm just sitting and I'm editing those 10 videos and posting them. So it, each day is different. Um, I try to get out on a walk or something because it's a lot of sitting and I'm very healthy and active. So I want to make sure I like move my body and what else in my day? Um, yeah, that's pretty. Oh, and I might go live as well. So I might be live on Amazon. I might go live on TikTok, And then one day a week, I live sell at a fashion boutique where I actually go in and live sell. Okay. What happens if you have a face for radio? <laughs> that's okay. I don't think you have to, I, I don't think it has to be so looks driven. Um, I've done plenty of videos without makeup on where I, I don't, think I am representing like the ideal woman in those videos. Like it's like the rough, but I was like, who cares? Like, and that's, what's so interesting. The news reporter in me was like, you have to be so perfect and you have to be so, you know? And I feel like nowadays that's not what people want. They want like real, like they don't care that you're like messy. I mean, half the time my nail polish is chipped. Like <laughs> it's not perfection. And, and maybe that's just not who I am, you know? So I don't represent, you know, that like everything's perfect. But if you have a face for radio or you just don't feel comfortable on camera, you can do reviews where it's just your hands, where mm -hmm. you don't have to put your face on camera at all. But I do recommend try to get comfortable with it. And I just think it's a skill that it's going to get you far. And I think people want to make eye contact. And even though it's in a video, like if you can give them like your face, I really think it makes a difference. And don't, don't worry. Like nobody's judging. If they're judging you, then they're not looking at the product. Like the whole point is like, you want to be talking about the product, not about you. Right. So don't even bother. Like, don't be like, Oh, I'm so messy. No, just like go right into the product. Give them that that value. And it doesn't, I, I believe it shouldn't matter what you look like if you can just offer them value and education. So having a beard, uh, I utilize that. And when I do some videos, uh, I'll just, I literally have a black background with a little bit of orange, just like this, but nothing. And I have my beard. Only thing that people see is my beard. And then I'll bring up a cup and just nobody ever sees the face. That's and so if awesome. they do see the face, I have a mask on. So it's well, just a <laughs> you that's like your gimmick though, right? Because you could totally have your face on camera. Like you have a great face, you know. For but radio. I, I think it's really <laughs> creative and cool. Like you found something that you could use, which is your beard, as yeah. like your backdrop, which again, so you can always do things like that too. I think that's really cool. Thank you. Now, Kelsey just dropped me a message to talk to you about the entrepreneurial life or entrepreneur life. Sure. Yeah, I can definitely talk about that. So that is, um, okay. So I said earlier that I had a business channel and our, we, my husband and I also have a business. It's called Kombucha on Tap. Well, it's actually rebranding. It's going to be called Keg Joy, but right now I think it's still Kombucha on Tap. And I don't know if you're familiar with Kombucha because I see you drinking a lot of soda, which I'm going to have to change you on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Kombucha is a health beverage. So it's a healthy beverage that's full of probiotics. And we distribute kegs of that and cold brew coffee, which I know you know what cold brew coffee is. I so do. We distribute that throughout Southern California, sparkling water, all kinds of stuff. And our Companies turning 10 um, next January. Wow. So we launched that in 2014 and we launched it um, as boyfriend and girlfriend and engaged. So actually, our company is older than our marriage. And it's been, 
yeah, it's been a wild ride. So I understand the entrepreneurial journey of just going all in, working around the clock. And yeah, let me know what, what I can answer there. Working with your spouse, which yes. I don't always recommend. <laughs> okay. No, I, I was, I, Kelsey, I thought it was a magazine, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was about kombucha. So that's, that's, that's great. So you're, you're, you're working with cold brew coffee and kombucha. Something uh, in my past, this goes back in the 90s. Uh, I was working, uh, I was contract, I was doing some work with Coca-Cola. And I was dealing with their VP of marketing. And we were talking and they were saying uh, that there's this new trend happening. And it's called cold coffee. Cold. It wasn't cold brew coffee. It was just iced coffee. And it was selling big in Japan. And we're both looking at each other going, it's never going to hit it here. Never. They, they weren't planning on launching it here. And all of a sudden, cold coffee or cold iced brew coffee, coffee, iced coffee, probably, I don't know. It's it's I don't know what the industry's like, but it's billions in sale probably. Oh yeah, our well, so our company name Kombucha on top. We started with Kombucha, which was um, we were ahead of the trend yep. with bringing Kombucha on top to Southern California. We were like the first distributors, um, but now our coffee sales actually outpace some of our Kombucha sales. So that's really? part of why we're like rebranding. Um, yeah, cold brew coffee. Well, also if you've never had it on tap. It's phenomenal. We have it on top of our house. So I drink it every day. It's so good. And kombucha. But um, yeah, it's delicious. Uh, I just have the Coke Zero truck pull up and give me. There you, you know, go. You need your Coke Zero on tap. You need a hydrator. That's what I need. Yes. Oh okay. So we've got a bunch of questions. Uh, you don't have to cut out early, do you? No, I'm good. Bring perfect. it on. We're going to run over time. So that's perfect. All right, so we do have lots of questions here. Um, my first one is for Norm. Uh, my dad loves cigars, and it's his birthday this weekend. Where can I buy some good ones? Norm, do you have any recommendations? What should uh, Tuyen do? Okay, you DM me afterwards, and I can uh, I can get you that information. So just get, uh, Kelsey, if you can uh, get a message over to Tien, and I'll uh, set them up. All right, perfect. Okay, from Simon, do nano influencers charge upfront or just work on affiliate basis? If they charge, how much do they do you charge approximately? How much should they expect? To yeah, how much? Are they, I mean, there's such a wide range when it comes to that. I don't think I could speak for everyone or even mm -hmm. myself because it really it depends on the product. It depends on so many things. I would think a lot of nano influencers would want to charge up front because we're getting hit up by so many people who, I hate to say it, but there's like a lot of flakes out there. Like so many people tell me they're going to send me something and then it never even comes. Right. And I never got the money. So I'm like, okay. You know, like it's kind of a way to say like, you're committed, you're real, you're in. I'm sure that happens to you Norm all the time. Yeah. Right. It's like, what, what just happened? Like you wasted my time with emails, <laughs> but then. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think it's it's a good respect to pay up front. And, and I know that's a risk on you as a seller as well, because you're like, well, what if the video sucks? Or what if they don't do the video? Um, you could maybe say half up front, half after if you're like a little worried about it. And then how, the charge, again, that just depends on on the person. So you could leave it up to them to kind of give you it. Or if you have a budget, you can say like, this is how much I can pay. Does that work? So that's, that would be my advice. And keep this in mind when you sell the, well, first of all, there's, there's emails going back and forth. The product comes in, you're unpackaging the product. You're writing the script if you're writing a script, but you know, most people will write a script. Then you're in front of the camera. Does the first take, you know, maybe it's a two or three take. It takes two or three takes. Maybe you're editing. This all takes time. And if, especially if you're new uh, as a new seller, expect to pay. You, you, you owe it to the influencer. You know, it's time and money. And I can tell you from, we started taking in product and we uh, put out the word very quickly. And all of a sudden, we had 200 products land at our door. And it, how do you even start with this? And I realized 
and I, I started to appreciate how, how under, um, I, I'm not going to say underutilized, uh, undervalued influencers, nano and micro influencers are. Uh, the amount of time, it I was ending up spending so much time, I was saying on the podcast, I had no idea. And then putting it up on your social media and developing your social media, how much time it takes. So regardless, if you're nano, macro or micro macro right on up, uh, you, you got to pay. And usually it's pay by level too. So th that's how I feel. Yeah, I agree. It's it's a lot more than just the filming part. For me, the filming is the easiest. Mm -hmm. It's the before, the after, the posting. It all does take. And I'm a one person like team. I don't have a huge. I don't have a team really. So it it is. Yeah, it is my time. Yeah. All right. Next question, Kelsey. Okay. Next question is from Neil. Uh, when adding videos to your listing, how do you get them in the order you want them in? Can you put a video in the spot under the A plus content and not in your image stack or vice versa? It's probably for me. Uh, yeah, I th I'm guessing they're probably talking about the influencer videos, but I don't know if you have that control. Um, you don't have that control. So if you're putting it up a, a, as a related video, uh, they come as they're uploaded. Um, as for the uh, influencer videos that come into your product listing, that's the algorithm that picks it up. And that's based on relevance. And you might have it. I, I, I just, I, one of our best selling products that we've done ever as an influencer, um, we put up and we were, we were making our money, most of our money off of this one company. And all of a sudden it's gone mm -hmm. and I'm in a rotation. And now you, you notice, oh, I'm, I'm getting consistently this money coming in and now it's gone I know. and it's not even showing up. It's yeah. It's, it's awful. Yes, I know. And then sometimes you're like, why? <laughs> oh yeah. And then if you're working with the influencer and they uh, provide you with the video. You can use that as your seventh, eighth, ninth video on your product listing. Uh, you can put it into your A plus. You can put it into your storefront. But um, you know, those are if you work with the influencer and they allow you to do that. Uh, the other way, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, the other way of doing it is just repurposing your video on the influencers platform and then on your platform, but then just make sure that you get a commercial license to do that. Okay, uh, next question is from Tuyen. Uh, hi, Deanne, I have a 4.8 star kitchen basket and would love to send you one for review. Also, we're getting a couple comments about uh, contact information. How do they work with someone like you? Um, do you have a email that you can provide? Yeah. Yeah, let's put my email in there. Should I type it? I'll type it to ours, and then you can just put it out there. So, okay, Hit me up, guys. I would love to review your stuff. <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, okay. All right, so I'll post that uh, shortly. Um, and then this is a comment from Rad, um, just from the, the brand side, uh, where brand, uh, Rad has paid upfront for TikTok videos uh, to Canadian media. Uh, we have yet to be able to contact them. So we decided not to pay upfront. So um, yeah, that's uh, sorry I've, to hear that. Rad. I've, I've heard that, Rad. Oh, I think it might've been you, Rad, contacting me. Um, yeah, well, I don't even, I don't have any advice that if you do pay upfront and you and the influencer just doesn't do your video. It's, uh, it's awful. It's too bad. So yeah, no, that's really bad. Hmm. You could, as long as if you've got an agreement with them, then you could go after them. Uh, but again, this is in Canada, so Rad, you live in the states, I believe. Uh, so it's it's a little trickier. But uh, yeah, sorry to hear that. It's that's not typical. Not typical. No, it's it's not. I wonder if there's like a payment protection that you can somehow like apply for a refund on PayPal or whatever, however you paid. Hey, go you through escrow. Be, you might be able to do that. Like, um, like say I never got my services or whatever. 
Yeah, you like if it's a big enough payment, you just go through escrow.com, I believe. Maybe, yeah. Or if you paid on a credit card, you could cancel. I, yeah. I don't know how you paid, but I think on PayPal, you can request a refund if like your product never showed up. So, and I think it, you, you might want to go after that. Okay. Uh, our next question is from Artie. Uh, what's your requir requirement to decide to promote and invest in marketing uh, certain products? So like me buying it on my own? Is that the question? I think... Like, how do you choose your product when they come Is to there you? a selection process that you have? Gotcha. Um, so if it's coming to me, my selection process is how, like, what's the time commitment? What's their budget? So I kind of factor those two things together. And, um, and that, that's about it. Like I'm, I'm willing to take on a lot of things. And then if I'm going to buy it and invest in it, I only do that if I actually want or need the product because there is zero guarantee, as Norm said earlier, that your video is going to ever show up. So I'm not one of those people that puts out a ton of money for things I don't need, mm. hoping my videos are going to hit. It's like I'm buying it because I actually legit want it and use it. All right. Okay. And then we have a question from Simon uh, just asking, can you give um, like a scale or a price range for influencers or, or nanos um, kind of based on their levels? Is there any numbers that you can go by? I just think that's a hard one. Norm, what would you say? Uh, mine is zero to 200. I would think like, in around there's there. There's a pretty range. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're just starting out, like when I first started out, I was willing to do it for a lot less, you know? Yeah. So I think it really depends on what stage you're at and, and how also how much your product costs. So if you have a very cheap product, expect to pay a little more for your review because the commission we're going to get as an Amazon influencer might be like nickels, you know? So we kind of factor that in. But if you have a very expensive product, I might be willing that to do that for free. So yeah. you just, it all depends. Like I took a giant trampoline for my kids. I didn't take a dime from the brand. I just was like, cool, send it to me. And so an electric scooter, like certain things, you know, so I, I think it really depends on your product and I would go from there. And, and I misspoke. Uh, I have, uh, if zero, like you were saying, and it could be even, uh, I said 200, I meant 500, but it could go much higher. It just depends yeah. on the, if, if the conversion rate and the, the influencer can show that, I would pay much higher or the quality. If you're just looking for the influencer like me, all I'm doing, you're not, I don't have time in the day to go out and make a fancy video. You're going to see my beard. I'm going to point, I'm going to talk and that's it. But if you want something that I have to actually go out and script and take a couple of shots, it's going to be a whole different price range. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if you want me to, to just do something where I'm just showing it, boom, 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 no edits that's a different price. Yeah. So I think that, I think, I think it's so hard to give you an actual number. And I hate when you can't like answer a question the way you want to, but it's, it's really hard without knowing what your product is. I, I I'll, uh, if somebody asked me for a price of a website, I just shoot it back at them. How long is a piece of string? Yeah. So they get the gist. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that's it, Kels. All right, we just got one final comment yep. uh, from Chuck, who is the bearded mimic. Uh, if your husband is into grilling, I've got products for him as well. So, uh, yeah, we, yeah we love grilling. Yeah, all the all those, guys stuff. <laughs> Chuck's got great products too, by the way. Really good products. Yeah, no, bring it on. I mean, this is great. I love. I, I was not expecting that at all. So, what an added perk to have you guys want to work with me. That's awesome. Okay, all right. I think that's it. You're off the hook. Right. And uh, <laughs> just contact information, which we've put up there. Um, we're going to go to the Wheel of Kelsey in, in just two seconds. So if you have not uh, added your name or hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, or if you haven't tagged two people to get that second entry, do it now. We're going to be doing it in about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, so is there anything else that you want to add? Um, 
thank you guys for hanging out. That was so much fun. If you do go to my storefront, hit the follow button. That actually helps me on Amazon get seen more for my lives. So go ahead and hit that little follow button. It doesn't really affect you or your Amazon. So that's great. And um, yeah, feel free to follow me on the other platforms as well. And any questions, you guys all have my email. Feel free to reach out. Fantastic. Okay. So I guess this is my live read. Here we go. Let's see if I don't blow this. Okay, this is for Seller Basics. Hey, Amazon sellers ever faced with account suspensions, ASIN hiccups, or IP headaches? Introducing Seller Basics, your Amazon accounts guardian. With just 20 or just 29, ha ha ha, with just $99 per month, Seller Basics offers a dedicated team to shield your business from these challenges. Plus, this membership offers free legal consultations from seasoned e-commerce attorneys. No long-term contracts, canceled at just a month's notice. View Seller Basics as your account, uh, your Amazon account's health plan. Check it out at sellerbasics.com. And I got to throw in this disclaimer, Seller Basics is not an insurer law firm. Consultations come from independent firms. Uh, results may vary and membership needed before events leading to claims and terms apply. All right, let's have a word. Oh, no, let's go to the wheel. It's time for the wheel of Elsie. All right. Oh, we got a good wheel today. And no message from Kelsey. All right. Oh, there we go. He's back. I'm sorry. My computer is slow today. I'm going to shuffle this up. Let's see who the winner is. If you are the email or if you are the winner, please email us k at lunchwithnorm.com. Drip, you are the winner. Oh, my God. Wow. How many times has he won in the last? On a roll. So, Drip, let us know which uh, prize you want. You have the watch option or the um, the coaching call. So let us know. And uh, congratulations. Wow. Okay. Now you are off the hook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure having you on. Yay. No, thank you guys so much. This was so much fun. I love it. Oh, he's getting the watch or she. Oh, the watch. Perfectly. Her. Yeah. So we'll ship Perfectly. That oh my gosh. <laughs> so fun. Wow. Lucky. That's good. Okay. Well, thank you again. Uh, you Are you going on the cruise? I am. Yeah. I was just telling Kelsey. So we all, we get to hang out in, in real life. This is going to oh. be so much fun. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. oh, that's great. So, so I me on the online sellers cruise end of January. I will be there. I'm actually fantastic. One of the and we've got, and I I haven't put it up yet. I know that we have um some tickets from Carlos mm -hmm. and they're ridiculous. I, I think that there is a couple that are even free. Uh anyways, I've got to sort that out and get it out there for you guys. But uh that's gonna be in January. Yeah. Uh, is it January the 21st? 21st I think to the 28th. Yeah. I've and been on two other cruises with Carlos. It's fantastic. Uh, the cruise, I wasn't going down this rabbit hole, but if you haven't ever been on a cruise or if you've been on cruises, you know what it's like. It's all inclusive. You eat when you want. It's just, it's a blast. And you got lots of excursions. Well, what Carlos did is he's made this into sort of a mastermind. So when you're on the water, you're learning. And it's just a really great it, uh, uh, just atmosphere where it's not a huge mastermind. I think last time there was 120. I think there will be probably two or 300 people this time. But it's just a really great learning environment. And talk about networking. I mean, all you're doing is hanging around with each other for a week and doing some fun stuff. So if you guys are interested, let me know. I know Carlos has given me some great deals and I think we'll be drawing for a free ticket uh, one of these days nice. for, for two people. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Yeah. You guys come on the cruise. It's going to be It'll awesome. be fun. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Yeah. Cannot wait. Okay. Until then, want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, 
If you want to check out our latest podcast, click over here. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.